Peace, love, and light, my beautiful Scorpios. Welcome to Sunday, fun day. I will you all a bliss and enjoying your weekend with your family. I hope you all went out on Earth Day and grounded yourself, completed a grounding ritual. That would have been a beautiful day to release, you know, give it right on back to Mother Gaia and let her transmute all of that negativity and bless you with the rejuvenation and the peace that you need. Today is Sunday, like I said, so it's been a busy day already, but I wanted to kick off the week with a new reading for you, pick up on the new energy that's flowing in, you know, the end of the week, we got the eclipse that's opening up on uh, April 30th, so we are coming into May with a very powerful bang, <laughs> so, you know, prepare yourselves, beloved, it's going to be very, very um exciting i feel it's going to be a lot of positive changes a lot of necessary changes as well um for anyone that may be new i welcome you to the channel uh my name is q i too am a scorpio uh i am an empath i channel messages intuitively and i am clear audience so i incorporate music into the reading which is why you hear it playing in the background uh the messages tend to blend beautifully with what comes out in the tarot cards Right now we have J. Cole, and the name of this song is January 28th. Um, that is his solo return, so maybe some of you all, uh, that date may be significant to you, whether that may be um, someone you could be dealing with, maybe a child, maybe a family member, maybe a loved one that has transitioned back to the essence. Um, but that number, uh, January 28th, uh, that's equal that equals to 11 so maybe some of you were born on 11 11 maybe some of you are um, were born on let's say uh, October 29th um, that reduces to 11 uh, maybe some of you all are dealing with someone who uh, could actually be uh, like I said, their solar return could have been on the 11th. Um, I definitely am sensing that, you know, maybe there's a lot of air energy. Maybe you could be in a very, very uh, reflecting a lot, you know, very cerebral place right now where you're reflecting, analyzing, you know, doing a lot of um, investigation, you know, researching something. Maybe you're in a studious energy right now. Maybe you could be dealing with someone who's in air energy, like I said. But we shall see what comes out with the tarot cards. But I do feel like there's a lot of like observation, um, being very logical at this time. Maybe you've learned to be more logical, um, less emotional, um, head over heart, opposed to heart over head. Um, so that could be, you know, one of the things that you have, one of the changes you've implemented uh, during your dark night of the soul journey. Right now we have uh, Mob Deep, Rising Power to Prodigy. The name of this song is called Temperatures Rising. Um, so that sounds like something's getting hot. If the temperature's rising, we know that we're coming into the summertime. But um, maybe that could also be very indicative of, you know, you feeling, you know, like um, very excited about something. You know, you could get flustered when you're excited or when there's you know, some level of um, excitement that's that you're dealing with. So that could really like make you kind of flustered and that could get your heart racing and you could get a little hot and, you know, and, and, and sweaty. And so maybe you're dealing with something that also could be uh, pretty negative. That's going to get you heated. Um, and the divine is telling you to use head over heart to get be logical and not emotional to not act out of a place of emotion, to not allow someone to pull you off of your, you know, out of equilibrium, off your square and into their drama. So maybe somebody could be coming in trying to entice you into something. Um, I'm hearing very loudly, do not get distracted by the distractions, stay the course. Uh, so that's why that song January 28th was playing. Uh, because like I said, that 28 and that one January is the first month of the calendar year, uh, that reduces to 11, um, and 11 reduces to two. Um, even though a lot of people say it's a power number, um, 
that's still telling you that there's divine intervention, something that you need to play, pay close attention to because the 11 is like a portal. So that means there's divine downloads, transmissions, and a lot of um, cerebral activity at this time. And you may need to use your logic. You may need to use your intuition. Um, as I was going, 11 breaks down to two. So the two is the high priestess and the high priestess is very aware. She's very sharp. She's very psychic. She's very clairaudient, clairvoyant. Um, she's very, very much the keeper of ancient wisdom. So she knows the hidden secrets. So it's almost as if the divine is saying that you've seen some sort of trickery before. So it's like, you're not new to this, you're true to this. So trust your intuition, your inner gumption, that inner wisdom, because that'll get you out of a situation where someone can potentially have you getting a little hot tempered, um, having you a little uh, stressed, aggravated. But I digress, let's go ahead, do some house cleaning before we delve deeper into the reading because I can just keep going, baby. So as I said, if you are new, um, I too am a Scorpio. These are general readings. So my spiel is eat the fish, spit out the bones. If it doesn't apply, please let it fly by. Do not try to force a story to be your story. If it doesn't apply, I'm gonna say that one more again because some of y'all be leaving me comments saying, I'm not taking it all ass back and I'm not doing this and I'm not, and I'm like, okay, beloved, you, you know, to each his own, this may not be your message. And if you know that it doesn't apply, you got to let it fly by. Don't get all salty. And you definitely don't need to be argumentative with me in no comment section because it's unnecessary because I clearly say this disclaimer, right? Chim, if it doesn't apply, let it fly by. It, it's a very simple step. <laughs> Just skip past that part and get to the part that may resonate, you know, and that's also why I say that, you know, you're not just your sun sign. So some of y'all are just religiously listening to sun sign videos or sun side tarot messages and you're not checking what's happening in your moon, you know, dip on over to your moon, you know, tarot readings and see what what's there for you. There could be some jewels and gems y'all are missing out on because you're so focused on the sun. The sun is, of course, it's illuminating and it provides you, you know, foresight um, and optimism. That's what you have to look forward to. But you also want to be aware of what may be hidden behind the scenes, things that you may not know, you know, and what may be potentially, um, you know, arising. So just just check other placements because there's absolutely um, some jewels that some of you all could could really be picking up and cashing in on and um, it, it, it could be really conducive to your betterment so that's why I say these things in the beginning I'm not trying to sound you know redundant this ain't redundancies and regurgitations for no reason like I'm literally trying to beat you in the head with what you should do um, I can only tell you from my perspective these are things I do I don't just listen to Scorpio readings I listen to my Vedic sign which is Libra which most of you Scorpios all of you Scorpios are Vedic um, are Libras in Vedic astrology and you'll find that when you listen to Libra video videos they they correlate and align so beautifully with what you are going through so you really should check other placements you know what I'm saying get into um, I don't want to say get into a habit, but at least, you know, once or twice, uh, you should check it out and see if it resonates. Maybe it doesn't resonate. Maybe you'll find that your rising resonates more than your moon, or maybe you'll find that your Venus resonates more than both. You know what I'm saying? But you have to explore other things. You're more than just one thing. You know what I'm saying? So I digress. But, um, so yeah, eat the fish, spit out the bones. If it doesn't apply, let it fly by. My readings are timeless, obviously. I do like to let you know what day I'm taping, but I don't give you the date that I'm taping. So, I mean, unless it's like a powerful, you know, synchronized number, like, you know, 222 or something like that. Um, we just had Earth Day, so that was powerful, which is why I spoke on it. But I don't, these aren't just, you know, date specific. This is, this is a general reading and these are timeless messages so it doesn't matter if you pick click on the video a week from now two months from now three years from now if the messages resonate then they're for you um, because we're not all going through our journey at the same time experiencing the same things at the same time some of us are further along some of us aren't some of us are just going through the awakening and that's why these messages are timeless and um, so 
enough of that. I would like to call upon the elements of water, fire, earth, air, ether, and spirit. Ashe. I ask our beautiful angels, archangels, ancestors, sending masters, spirit guides, deities, animal totems, earth, mother Gaia, universe, source, the divine, shine a powerful, powerful message of love and life for my beloved Scorpios. I call personally upon Baba Obatala, Mama Oya, and Baba Ogun to bless me with the intuition and discernment of my cards, help me to pick up on the energy, the number synchronicity, and vibrations of my cards. And so it is. So mote it be. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. So right now we have Group Home. And the name of the song is called Superstar. So a lot of you all are literally like you're shining, you're glowing. You're just radiating, you know, this this confidence. This energy has really been, um, it's been very profound for Scorpios. It's been almost like, because I've, I've noticed that whenever I do these readings, there's just this air of, you know, confidence, self-love, um, knowing your worth. You know, you're not putting up with anything. And it, I feel it has a lot to do with you all really healing uh, from something that may have been very traumatic. Um, and whenever you could like complete a cycle that had you in this 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 um, emotional, you know, roller coaster, it, it is very empowering and it's very liberating. And so that's what I think I'm picking up on. That's what I know I'm picking up on is the fact that you all are very empowered right now because you've released something that has been very toxic in your life, something that has been very much a block for you. And so that's potentially one of the reasons why the song that opened up January 28th, uh, which is, like I said, air energy, that 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 date is um, it falls into the uh, zodiac sign of air of Aquarius. So to me, I feel there's this very cerebral place that you're in. I'm getting queen of swords energy, king of swords energy, where you're using logic. You're looking at everything with that first eye, you know, from a bird's eye view. You got that hawk vision. You have that falcon vision, that falcon tenacity or boldness going towards what you want. You know, it's like. There's this sixth sense that you have because I also was feeling like that was cluing me in on you having like that's the number two, which is the high priestess. So I'm feeling like there's this very strong psychic ability, sensitivity, awareness, knowingness. Um, and that's making you very powerful because when you are when you're aware of something, then you could prepare for it. But when you are unaware or you're blind, deaf, dumb and blind, then you can't prepare for what could potentially be a threat. But when you have foresight and you can like literally see things happening before they happen, like being a chess master is 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 a part of that game is being able to interpret or to be able to determine or foresee what steps your opponent is going to make before they make them. That way you could avoid being checkmated or whatever, um, or having your pieces taken, you know what I'm saying? Your, your, your pieces on the board taken. So it's like, it really is a matter of you having a foresight, having that, that, that instinct, that intuition, that gumption. And I feel you all have that with superstar. I'm getting a strong sense that there's been a very, profound healing that has taken place and a purge and not only have you released but I feel that there's this sense of groundedness that you're feeling and there's this sense of groundedness because you've been able to release those things those ideologies habits behaviors people circumstances situations all of that you've let it go you let it go and now things are fluid things are flowing it's like your water it's like be water my friend so it's like that's your element so it's like there's, there's this sense that you're not going, you know, against anything. You're just letting 
you know, the, the, if you're in the ocean, say for instance, and you just kind of lay back and you just let the ocean take you, it'll literally like take you where you want to go. But when you're fighting it, you, you, there's, there's, the resistance will, will literally be, um, it'll be more threatening. That's why they tell you like when you are about to drown, all of the kicking and stuff, it, you, all you're doing is tiring yourself out. But if you just kind of like let your body just limp and you just do, you know, uh, a gentle kind of doggy paddle, your, your, your chances of survival are higher than kicking and, you know, because you're, you're, you're psyching yourself out. But I digress. I'm going down a dark place. But I just want you to know, like being fluid and flowing, going with the flow, um, be water. I keep hearing Bruce Lee say, be water, my friend, you know, be water. That's your element. So, you know, water's healing. Water, water is also how powerful. It's, it could be destructive, but it could also be uh, a healing element. You know what I'm saying? Water could be very destructive. When you think of tsunamis, you know, it, it could destroy towns, you know. So it's really about how you um, embody that, like how you utilize, I should say, the power that you possess. And I feel like now there's more of a focus to really um to really navigate in a way where you're not putting yourself in potential situations that are going to lead you down a dark path because now you have this instinct now it's like you speak energy but um i've been talking too much so right now we have my daughter her song is called decisions so that's very interesting so make the right decisions. Maybe you're going to have some choices. Maybe some of you are stuck in two minds, which is why that air energy came out with January 28th by J. Cole. The bottom of the numerology deck, we have individuality. And there goes the 11. I was just chiming on 28, January 28th. That's 11. And this reduces to two. This is like the high priestess energy to me. Even though a lot of people say 11 is a power number and you're not necessarily supposed to reduce that. I don't care what you're saying, the way that I interpret the cards and the way that I channel my messages. 11 is going to get broken down, son, especially if it if, if it it calls for it to be like if it fits, then it will. There's certain instances where I'll just leave it. But in this instance, this is about you trusting your own intuition and not letting anybody lead you astray, not letting anyone take away your free will and liberties. You have to utilize your own knowingness, your own intuition, your own wise dome to make a decision because we have decisions playing by my daughter. She is a dope artist. She's a dope producer. And she made this song, this track, and you should be able to pull up some of her songs on her site, which is in the link below. That's a shameless plug for my daughter. But still, I, 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 this message here, um, individuality is speaking how you had to really take your power back. You know, this too also deals with the sacral chakra and the sacral chakra is all about self-care. It's about you knowing your self-worth. It's about you operating and functioning in a space where you are power, you are empowered. And that's literally what I was chiming in on before we even touched the cards is that you're in a space now where you're like the queen of swords. You know, if it doesn't make sense, you're not getting wrapped up in it. You're not dealing with it. You're not dealing with anything that's going to take you into a low vibration because it's like you've already come out of a dark space. So you're not letting anything tamper with your happiness or your peace, your joy, your overall wellness. So individuality is telling me that you've had to um, obtain this and acquire this through perhaps a toxic relationship or karmic relationship or karmic relationships. It doesn't necessarily have to be a love ship. It could have been a friendship. It could have been a family dynamic. It could have been any type of connection which taught you self-love, self-care. We have little Kim, and this is called Shut Up Bitch. So maybe you have people who tried to hush you, people who tried to muzzle you, people who were really uh, trying to gossip. You know, I'm hearing gossip, you know, rumors, um, people like trying to defame your character, smear campaigns. And it's like you knew what was being done uh, because you could pick up on their fugazi and jealous and envious type of energy whenever they would be around. 
It's like when somebody really dislikes you um, and they carry like this, this contempt in their heart and then they come around you with a fake smile, it's very easy to detect the fakeness. And, and no matter what anybody does to try to sugarcoat it, it's like energy doesn't lie. And so somebody that was really an enemy, I feel like you realized that this person or these individuals were not necessarily um, rooting for you. They could have potentially been trying to put some roots on you. So with this individuality card, I feel like you isolated yourself, detached from those toxic connections, and you started to really do some internal work, which is why I was feeling like there was a lot of reflection, you know, like deep reflecting, deep reflection, you know. So let's see what's on the split. I can't make this up. Karmic completion. As I said in the beginning, when you complete a cycle, that always makes you more mindful. You know what I'm saying? Of what you have around you, but also it you give off this air of strength, of power, of beauty. You know what I'm saying? Of wisdom because you've just completed something that was very you know, arduous, very very taxing, you know, very turbulent and so i feel like with the 10 and 11 synchronicity which is dope they both have read it's like you've you've come full circle scorpios and that's why you're in this place of power that's why you're in this space you know of of you know because they say when scorpios go through you know something toxic or end karmic relationships um go through the transformations and the rebirths um they tend to re-emerge almost in a queen of swords or a king of swords energy and it's because there's this whole different perspective now to use logic over emotion because as a water sign um, you're naturally going to be very caring and loving and nurturing of everyone regardless of what the situation is that is just your role you're naturally very nurturing and loving and devoted individuals very loyal also and potentially uh there could have been an instance where you were loyal to the wrong individuals and that's why the individuality card is here because they could have been codependent relationships not just on their part with you but on your part with them trying to keep certain energy around you just to have it around you but not making sure that the people or the energy you had around you was solid, you know? So I feel like there was a whole lesson that was required um, in having these fake relationships. And what you've done is you've completed the lesson. This is like you ace in the test. This is like the divine is saying, you know, here's your degree in life. You got your, your school of hard not life degree. And so that's like, <laughs> You know, the divine is congratulating you because you've come full circle, meaning you've learned the lessons. And with shut up, bitch, now you are speaking your truth. Now you're not afraid to express yourselves, say how you feel. Whereas before, you may have really been passive, pleasing to please, not really communicating your true feelings, not really standing up for what you believed in, but kind of being almost passive. And so now the passiveness, it has since long past <laughs> passiveness has passed <laughs> you know you're no longer in that frame of mind so i see completion again so this is a double confirmation that you've completed a cycle and now you're more guarded you know there's also like i said that introspective work where you're doing more internal work you know and only when you do that internal work are you able to really thoroughly assess you know everything else you know uh because you're coming from a place that where you're now healed and you're not wounded or traumatized. It's like now you're coming from a place of wisdom, wise dome, because you've learned certain lessons. Um, and like I said, sometimes people have to learn through, you know, trial and error. You have to learn through getting burned sometimes. Some people have to experience the pain in order to fully know what the experience is. And so when you learn from that, that means you're not going to duplicate something and go through that experience all over again. So now you're going after what it is you want. We got Kiki Rowan Mano, a go-getter, plain. So now you're going after what you want. Now you're a go-getter. Now you have, like I said, that fire in you, that 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 burning desire to, to chase after your dreams, to, to make everything that you envision for yourself happen. 
So some of you all could be really like, as I said, in a very studious energy or just learning, picking up information, researching, investigating. Um, maybe you are, you know, delving into your spirituality, mastering something within those realms of occult and esoteric information. Or maybe you're just dipping your toe in and, and just kind of open to whatever it is you receive. But I feel this devotion now. And it's because you've learned to really, you know, assert yourself in a way where you're, um, you're doing the things that you, that you desire. It's like you're not backing down anymore. It's like you have th this fight. You have this, this fire in your gut now to, to go after what you want with this go-getter song. And it's because you've completed something that could have kept you like restrained, restricted, um, and stagnant, stuck, you know, in a very low vibration. I just pick up like an energy vampire, especially with that individuality coming straight out the gate. It just tells me that you had to learn a lesson how to... Um, take your power back, um, how to become an individual because you were in a codependent connection because you was with someone and you know, to which you, you like, you may have had like attachments and things of that nature. So let's go ahead. And there it is again, individuality can't make this up. So let's go ahead. We're going to pick up on this energy. See what's coming and going out, going on for my beloved Scorpios. We got the eclipse seasons popping off. I believe there's another eclipse next month. So see that new beginnings can't make this up new beginnings. This is a new passionate start going after what you want. Just feeling that fire, just feeling that little, you know, it's like you're ready to take leaps, you know, leaps of faith. You're trusting the process. You're fearless. I just get a sense of fearlessness, especially with the song Go Getter. So it's like you're going after what you want now. You know, regardless of what anybody told you, regardless of what the situation, how it played out, how things ended. It's like you're not letting anything stop you. You're a go getter. And you're going to achieve your goals regardless of what other people may be trying to do to either thwart your plans or block you. It's like it's like block who? All right. And so we have the Lost Boys, and this is called Renee, Rising Power to Freaky Ty. So bottom of the deck, we have spirituality, beloved, 77. So you have a spiritual union, connection, soul tie to someone that's coming in. Some of you, this could have been um, someone named Renee. Renee is a unisex name. I've known, um, you know, men who are named Renee. So you could be dealing with someone named Renee. Or maybe you have a loved one named Renee that could be in the spirit realm. With this seven seven, I, seven, seven, I do feel like you are matching someone's energy with whom could be like your cosmic companion, a twin flame. With seven, seven, I feel there's very strong psychic messages. I was picking up on that earlier with the reference of the high priestess and that 11, you know, being a portal where information and affirmation can come in and go out, where it could be transmitted, um, where it could be received um so maybe there's this you know very strong psychic activity right now maybe you're having some really strange dreams um we do have the name of this uh group is called the lost boys so i am sensing like you know maybe there's a lost connection with someone and i feel like the way that the two of you keep um keep connection or keep the con the connection going is through some sort of psychic uh, means where you're communicating telepathically, intuitively, maybe visiting one another in the dream world, in the dream state. Or maybe there's someone literally like astral projecting and doing remote viewing or there's there's some means of uh, connectivity. And it's a spiritual um, communication because both of these sevens are telling me that you're you're not only very psychic and in tune, but someone that you have a strong connection with is also um, very psychic and in tune. Um, this could just be speaking to you having some profound um, messages, divine interventions from maybe your ancestors. Uh, maybe they're, you know, kind of alerting you to pay attention 
you know, to pay attention to things, uh, to what's going on around you. This is like strong communication because this seven, seven breaks down to five. Um, the bottom of the deck, we got spiritual partnership. So I do feel like you have a very strong connection with someone. This is like a twin flame. Um, with spiritual partnership, this is like you and this person are a spiritual power couple. So this is like the epitome of like the high priestess and the high priest coming into union and really, you know, having a spiritual career together where you're helping the collective or you're helping, you know, awaken the masses or you're utilizing some sort of spiritual gifts, talents and helping bring some sort of awareness Um but I feel strongly like you're coming into a very profound connection um, and it's happening very soon because this 27 is telling me that whoever this person is, that you have this very strong psychic connection is in the hermit mode right now, which is where, you know, a lot of deep reflection, meditating, um, a lot of introspection, you know, searching within for the answers, all of the same steps. Uh, that you all have taken to heal yourselves, love yourselves, um, as well as know yourselves. Um, someone else has also taken those steps. It's as if somebody is is really also learning the value of you know self care. You know, because maybe this person was also needing to learn to be an individual, to stand erect. And I say that because we have this orange and that orange deals with the sacral and the sacral chakras is, is really about your your self care, you know, how you treat yourself. It's about the relationship you have with the self. And so this person now is in a space where it's almost like they're looking back in awareness. You know, there's there's a lot of of almost um, deep reflective work you know, really, really assessing things, really soul searching. And they're coming into this awareness with this 27, uh, that the connection perhaps they have with you is one of, of, of very powerful, um, it's a very powerful connection. This is powerful. Okay. So let's see. So who's the person Scorpio is attracting? May I have a message of love and of light from my beloved Scorpios? Thank you. Can't make this up. Spirituality and intuition, two double numbers. So you have 77 and 22. So like I said, two is the high priestess and there's two twos. So I feel like both of you are very, and this is just confirming that because we just saw spiritual partnership. We got spirituality and we got scared money playing. And so this is somebody who's definitely, um, you know, they could be a little afraid, a little apprehensive. You know, maybe they're um, someone who's not as confident, not as assertive. Maybe they just live in their head a lot. They're stuck in two minds. But this person is sending you a lot of messages or you could just be so powerful that you're picking up on how much this person dreams of you, thinks of you, longs for you. This person definitely is scared, you know, and I feel it has a lot to do with your power, with your strength. You're, you're very strong. Your scene is very strong, very determined, especially after completing some sort of karmic lesson that just speaks to, you know, your strength, your courage and your wise don't because you do. Um, it's like you've graduated to some degree, like you've leveled up uh, when you complete a karmic cycle. That is, you know, that could have been, you know, years, you know, of, 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 a, of a, a toxic cycle that you've been living in and for it to be complete speaks to, you know, how powerful, um, you have to be, to be able to, to end that cycle with this intuition, it breaks down to four two two breaks down to four. There is a lot of love and there's a strong attraction, not just to you physically, but I feel there's an attraction to your mind. You know, someone finds you or this person, you will find this person to be very stimulating, very articulate, intelligent, worldly, um, and emotionally so, you know, I feel with this four, this also says that there's, you know, a knowing that this connection could be very stable, you know, it could be very solid. 
on the bottom of the deck, we have self-discipline. So this person sees that you've really been working on yourself. You've been improving. It's like you've learned to have self-control, to not act out of emotion. You know, maybe this person is learning it themselves because maybe they were fiery. Remember we had, um, what was that song? And it was talking about, um, dang it, what was that song? And it was talking about um, temperatures rising by mob deep. That's what it was. And so, you know, this, this is potentially, you know, maybe you were fiery at one point and now it's like your buttons can't be pushed because they're non-existent. You know, just like you can't pull a trigger that isn't there. And that's what I meant when I said, like, you really did a lot of inner work. You've healed yourselves. You've healed at a soul level to the point where you're not falling for, like, the same trickery, the same games, the same manipulation. Because it's like you've, you've leveled up. You've graduated. With this, this self-discipline self number 41, 5, this is, like, because you have a strong love of self. This is how the person you're attracting feels about you. And we got Jay called speaking, count it up. So it's like with this 41.5, they definitely are feeling like you have, you've leveled up, you know, because if you're counting up, that means like you're going up. So that's like an increase. So it's like you've improved, you know, it's like you have really improved. You've, you've graduated, you know, you, you've received that, that degree in the school of hard not life. Like, and so with the self-discipline, it shows that your self-love you know, is, is of main priority for you. That's your focus. You're not going to do anything that is going to have you, um, outside of your comfort zone or having you stepping down off your throne to deal with, you know, the peasants. It's like when you an empress and an emperor, you don't have to step down off your throne because you got worker bees for that. You have a whole empire, you know? And so when you are the empress and the emperor, you know, you got pawns, knights, rooks, you have everybody that's going to, you know, fight before you even have to do it. So it's like with this energy, this is what self-discipline is, is not allowing people to to pull, you know, pull you out of um, out of equilibrium, you know, to not fall for the distractions, you know, to not get distracted by the distractions. So someone does see that you are very, you know, self-control, like you have self-control, self-respect, self-love, you have dignity, and you've changed, you've evolved to this. Maybe you were fiery in the past, maybe you was like, you know, tick, tick, boom, you know, and now it's just like, you're unbothered, you're not allowing anybody to take you out of your comfort zone and, you know, bring you into this mayhem, this chaos. So what, what, um, how does this person, Scorpio is attracting, feel? about our beloved Scorpios and have a message of love and of light. How does this person Scorpios attracting feel about our beloved Scorpios? Okay, we just had a card. Where did it go? There it is. Teaching and learning. So they've been learning a lot from you because you've been teaching them a lot. You could be the teacher and the student at the same time. And with this 12, they see you as a divine feminine. That's the Empress. This 57 breaks down to 12. And 12 break down to 3. So this is showing me that there is the strong sense that this person sees you as someone who has mastered yourself. You've reached a level of self-mastery. If you can evolve into a divine feminine energy, the empress, that means that you have gone through a lot of life changes. You've experienced many things, but you have overcome them. So with this teaching and learning, there's green on the inside of the symbol and there's purple all around. So that speaks to you. I have the hiccups, give me one moment. Sorry about that. Whew. So that speaks to you really being very psychic as I said. And as the Empress, you're very nurturing, loving, caring, you're powerful. And I was just using the example of the Emperor the empress and the emperor, you know, really sitting on their, on their throne and not falling for the okie doke, not coming down off the throne to deal with peasantry. And then voila, this is how this person sees you as someone who's in your power. 
you know, someone who knows their worth, someone who's very abundant, successful, self-sufficient, independent. That's what individuality is all about. You've been able to acquire that. You've learned some very valuable lessons. And not only have you learned them, you've applied everything you've learned. And that's why you've reached this level of self-mastery. The bottom of the deck, we have perseverance for so you've learned to persevere through all of life's difficulties, all of the trials and tribulations that people were bringing to you, that situations were bringing to you. It's like you've learned. You've been on this voyage. We have the Isley Brothers voyage to Atlantis. So you've been on this journey for a while, this voyage. And that's what you've persevered from. This voyage has not been an easy one. I'm hearing there's been peaks and valleys you know you've been on mountaintops you know you've been through the valleys you've been through the you know through the thick of it and and you've persevered through it all and that's why there's a great reward this four also is the emperor in traditional tarot so you have this queen uh this this divine feminine rather this divine fe feminine's energy and then you have bam the divine masculine they always say the emperor is not too far from the empress you know whenever you pull her energy that masculine is right there so this person is now in this energy what's hidden is someone else is also going through a healing process you know and he's saying if i go all the way without you where would i go so this person now is realizing you know how much love this green deals with the heart chakra so this person is really trying to grow trying to heal so that they can match your vibration and your energy and they do because this is the four remember you had spiritual partnership and you also have these double numbers which i always state is like you and your divine counterpart are mirroring one another there's obviously you know a lot of mental activity similarities a very strong spiritual connection there's also this strong intuition a lot of communication back and forth telepathically and intuitively and so this person now knows that you're a master manifester they know that you have the ability to pick up on whatever it is that they may be sending to you you know psychically and you are picking up on it but this person has been learning from you you've been inspiring them You've motivated them, activated them. Whatever you've done, now they are on this journey. They're matching your vibration, matching your fly, so to speak. So what's hidden in the energy for my beloved Scorpios? They have a message of love and light. What's hidden in the energy for my beloved Scorpios? They have a message of love and light. Two cards. So change is here on the table. So there is a change. And remember, I was saying that I could feel that you have this powerful new beginning something is changing and it's something you've manifested and i feel like it has something to do with love because this is a pink card and this is something that you've manifested and it's a wish fulfillment all in the same and this is a positive change and this reduces to four the five and the eight came out together these are both the messages for what's hidden so this 8 and 5 reduces to 13. 13 reduces to 4. So love is in the air. You've manifested this. As this divine feminine, as this divine feminine or divine masculine, you both are very psychic. And what they're saying in, this, in the song is, I'll always come back to you. And he's saying Atlantis. I'll always come back to you. So this is like a twin flame or some like past life connection that you may have with someone. There were changes that were needed. And we did see that because you had karmic completion come out. And then you had completion. So your person is a step behind you. It's like they're right behind you. Just like that emperor came out, that number four perseverance came out right after teaching and learning. That's what I feel this journey is. It's like with teaching and learning, you've been teaching your person. You know, one person is always awake, whereas the other one is in kind of like the sleep state. Still, you know, unaware of how profound the connection is. But I feel like because you've changed and you've changed your not only 
yourself, but your energy, your vibration, you've transformed. It activated your person, your, your true twin. And now they're going through change. Now they're going through their um, dark night of the soul journey. And this is something that you could have asked for, prayed for. Remember, we saw, you know, that energy of you being like, you know, the high priestess. And so the high priestess is very aware. She has this knowingness. And we also saw spiritual partnership. So this manifestation is like a wish fulfillment, I feel. Someone is going to feel that you're like a dream come true. Someone that they've prayed for. And you're going to feel the same way about them. The bottom of the deck, we got domestic harmony. I cannot make this up. And we have D'Angelo, me and those dreamy eyes of mine featuring J.D., Rising Power, J. Dilla. So this is someone that you're going to have a very beautiful and blissful connection with. I'm seeing a lot of smiles, laughter, just quality time spent with this person, building, growing. I'm hearing a, a, a future, a legacy, maybe even, like I said, like a very, uh, a very powerful uh, business partnership as well. Because remember, we had spiritual partnership. So maybe the two of you will get into some sort of spiritual career together because you both are um, psychics. You both are spiritual. You got the 77 spirituality. And me and those dreamy eyes of mine. So this person is absolutely dreaming of you. Maybe there's something very beautiful about your eyes. Maybe you have um, a lighter tone. Maybe you have hazel eyes, green eyes, blue eyes or light brown eyes, or maybe you just have very penetrating eyes. This person loves looking into your eyes or they feel like you could see right through them, like you just penetrate their soul. With this domestic harmony, I just feel like it's speaking to, you know, the synergy, the chemistry that you and this person will have and, and just how happy the home will be ultimately. Because when I hear domestic harmony, I just feel like the whole household is gonna flourish and thrive and be happy, you know, on down to the children, the pets, you know, it's just a very happy environment, stress free, free environment, you know, no low vibration. It's like you could be going through anything, but once you step foot in your home, it's like, that's your safe haven. That's like, y'all, there's just going to be like this, this rule of thumb where if you're going through something, you don't bring that negativity into the home because your home is your sanctuary. It's your safe space, your safe haven. And I feel like that's going to be something that, you know, it only breeds more positive energy. It's like a force field. It's like, you know, that's your protective space, your protective bubble. And this person and you are just going to be on the same page, same level with it. But there's a lot of dreams. This person dreams because I'm just picking up on the word dreamy, you know, me and those dreamy eyes of mine. And I just feel like whenever this person closes their eyes, they see your face, you know. This is someone that really, really is longing for you because they dream of you so much. With this 46 domestic harmony, this is also saying that if someone um, is in a karmic relationship, that connection is wrapping up and there's nothing harmonious about it. It's a very stressful situation. I remember, you know, with temperatures rising, maybe... There was a lot of arguments and fights in a karmic relationship, which is leading to, you know, um, something being called off. Maybe if there is a marriage or if two people reside together, um, it's just it's going to end and it's ending on a bad note because the time is up. The jig is up. The, the karmic cycle is complete. So it's like and we have this, you know, um, we have the eclipses coming. So that really ends. You know, that that's a powerful energy to to close out cycles and finalize them for once and for all. And if someone is still dreaming of someone from perhaps their past, that just means that it's it's a divinely connected, you know, a divine connection, a divine counterpart. And this karmic is, you know, it's like the time is up for that karmic. So let's see what is what is the outcome for my beloved Scorpios. Wow. So I'm going to expound, but look what came back out. Spiritual partnership. So this spiritual partnership, we got abundance. 
we have health, and we have new beginnings. So first and foremost, I saw the spiritual partnership. So I'm feeling like these are your messages. And then we got rebirth on the bottom of the deck. So this rebirth, this, this, there's a transformation, a major change that's taking place. And I feel the changes are taking place because you've done your work. And as you learn your lessons, you trigger and activate your person to learn theirs and go through their process. And I feel like that's literally what's happening. And right now we have Mary J. Blige destiny playing. And she says, searching for my destiny. I search for what makes me happy. Forget what others thought of me. I gotta be happy, finally happy. And so that's almost like what I feel your person that's meant for you is saying. Because they know that this is a de destiny type of love. This is a connection that they can't no longer deny. And so with this abundance, I feel like there's going to be an abundance of love. And a, and you got the 888 again. So the divine is like, this is, this is, this, these are the two messages that came out in your last reading. Look what just came out again. <laughs> so this is the divine, like giving you, you know, all of the confirmations that you need, that something's coming. Now, if you want to negate that and tell me how much you ain't looking for love or how much you don't. You ain't checking for nobody right now. And then the messages are not for you. Let's just put it like that. They're not for you. It won't come. Wish granted. You don't want love. It ain't coming. You ain't checking for nobody. They ain't coming. <laughs> but for those of you that are going to affirm and claim this, because this right here is telling you everything you need to know. These, this is the same two cards that came out in the former reading. You have spirituality and then the spiritual partnership that showed up and then that came out. So this is the divine telling you that this is a powerful spiritual connection. This is not your typical, oh, I got with them because they was cute. We was younger and we just had a dope connection. We used to go to the movies together and have fun. No, this is something that when you are around somebody, it's like your heart is like, do, 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 do. The energy field around the two of you are like magnetic. You can just feel this person. It's like everything in you just is like erupting. That's the type of chemistry that you're going to have with the person that's coming in. And only I don't feel a lot of y'all know who that person is because I think a lot of y'all are confusing it with some ex. You know what I'm saying? Because maybe some of y'all haven't met this person yet. Maybe this is somebody the divine is sending for you. And you, the person you've been thinking all along was your person absolutely isn't the person. Because with destiny, this is like the divine is saying this is destined to happen this manifestation of abundance not only are you going to be emotionally fulfilled but you're also going to be financially blissed because as i said you and this person are going to build something together you are the empress they came out as the emperor there's a lot of cerebral activity as i said this gives me the eight of swords energy you know that because of the purple inside and the orange on the outside. So someone's really up in their head thinking about this connection, you know, and maybe there's um, some sort of, you know, um, cycle. Like I said, that someone is closing out. Someone is going through their own cycle that they have to close out because that's what you just did. You completed a karmic lesson. So now someone else is wrapping up theirs. Those are the changes that are taking place. That's what's hidden. All of these cards are the outcome. So there's a lot of things that's going to change in the coming months and weeks. And we got this new beginning here as well. Someone is going through a transformation, some sort of sudden ending. And maybe this is someone who was caught up in a, re a karmic relationship. And this person now knows I got to be happy. You know, that's what Mary J. Blige was just singing in the song Destiny. And those, that's a beautiful song. So y'all might want to check that out. I might put the link for that song. But for this energy here, someone really truly is, is um, you guys are embarking on a brand new beginning. A brand new beginning because this is what you've worked yourselves up to do. Rebirth, that's a new beginning. That's the emergence of a new start, a new opportunity. And it looks like in love. 
Some of you were born on November 7th. Some of you were born November 5th, November 4th, 2nd, November 12th, November 3rd, November 8th, October 27th, November 6th, 8th, 1st, Yep. So, and then you have this rebirth. This is your energy. So Scorpios, you're, you, you've gone through major changes. And I feel like the, the, the shifts, you know, in your own consciousness and your vibration, your frequency, it has truly, it's triggered your divine masculine, your divine feminine. And we have right now, Capadonna 97 mentality featuring Ghostface Killer. So somebody that could, put, could have potentially ghosted you, and we're not talking about a recent ghost. Maybe this was years and years, you know, but whoever this person is that ghosted you with 97 mentality, maybe this is someone, because 97 was like, that was like, hip hop was at its prime. You know, the, 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 you know for those of you who are hip hop heads, I know everyone isn't, um, I'm, an, I'm a hip hop head, not a rapper, rap head. Like I, I love hip hop. I love the culture of hip hop and what it started out as, you know, the lyricism, you know, just the culture of it alone. It's a way of life, you know, for people who really, um, cause I grew up in the birthplace of hip hop. So I literally saw it in its, you know, in the conception, in its inception, excuse me. And so I, I saw what it took, you know, what people did. They started you know, being very creative, taking records, scratching, doing all kinds of break dances, graffiti. It was, it was just so many beautiful elements to the culture. And so with 97 mentality, hip hop, in my opinion, and a lot of hip hop heads opinion, that was like, it was at its prime. The lyricism, the style of it, just so many different styles of hip hop. It, you, you had your braggadocious hip hop, you had your conscious hip hop, your backpackers, you had your fun. It's like you just had a, a plethora. Now it's just so watered down to sound the same. And it's like, there's no lyricism ev at all. It's just, there's no lyricism. You could literally take out a pen and just write the same word over and over and over and the song will just go viral. And there'll be like a gazillion views over nothing. Um, but I feel like a lot of that is, is done on purpose, you know, just to kind of like water down the culture, as I said, but I digress. But with n 97 mentality, I do feel like that's also saying like, this is someone from your past. Um, this is somebody that you have history with, you know, um, maybe it's somebody that grew up, um, that was born, you know, maybe in what is 97? I would say that reduces to 16. So maybe somebody that was born in July, maybe somebody that's a cancer, maybe someone that, you know, their solar return may fall on the seventh, you know? Um, and I got seven in my hand, 16, and that's rebirth. So somebody's definitely going through some sort of rebirth. We got Nas and this is called represent. So I do feel like this person will represent everything that you're looking for because you've spoken into the ethers, you know, and especially with the spiritual partnership. This is written. It's like written in the stars. It's preordained something you've manifested with this manifestation. So the two of you, I feel, have been manifesting one another. And there's going to be an abundance of love, abundance of blessings that shower down upon you. Like I said, when you when you go through a lot, you know, um, a lot of trauma and you complete that cycle and you maintain your self-respect and your dignity, I feel like the divine rewards you for that. You know, there's blessings that are going to come in for you. And I feel like a lot of y'all know that. And that's why you're being very patient, you know, because good things take time to create. So you don't want to rush into anything um, and you don't want no, nothing rushing into you. You, you. You're not prepared if you just rushing through the lessons. It's like you made sure that 
you're healed, that you don't have triggers, that if somebody says something to you, you're not going to fly off the handle and get all hot tempered like that temperatures rising song was insinuating. So it's like maybe something or someone is going to come back to try to test you and you have to ace the test, you know, because this this eclipse is coming up. So there's going to be some tests. And I do believe that we're going to have Mercury retrograde, if I'm not mistaken, next month as well. So there's there's a lot of celestial energy going on and it's going to it's going to conflict with one another as well. So you have to be strong, mentally strong. I feel like that's what this is saying as well. Don't be up in your head too more too much. You know, you have to like be the change you wish to see in the world. I cannot make this up. Look what I just I just peeked behind this card and look what's here. Didn't I say that you and someone that you're going to be with, you guys are going to have like a spiritual career and you're going to work together. Look at look what's here. 78, 15, that's six. So this is like a past life love because I'm getting the lovers from that. And you know, on the traditional tarot, the lovers are depicted as a masculine and feminine energy. And then there's an angel overseeing that union. So maybe the divine is truly conspiring behind the scenes to bring someone to align your person to you. And this is not going to be just any old type of connection. This is a spiritual partnership. You got spirituality and then you got spiritual career. So this is someone you're meant to be with because I feel like the two of you have work here to help the collective. You have work to do to help the collective. And maybe somebody's up in their head about this connection, thinking about you, not taking action. But I do see with this new beginnings, you know, someone will come towards you because they really feel the strong, you know, strong magnetic pull. You know, we all have this very powerful energetic force field and I feel like yours is just kind of pulling someone in so let's see what else we got coming in going out going on with my beloved Scorpio so let me see what what are we gonna do I don't want to do um all right let's go with the sexual tarot let's let's get a little bit of sexual tarot energy going on it's been a minute since i've used those cards so let's see what we got all right and we got the seven of wands in the bottom of the deck so the seven of wands so this is like somebody you are definitely very guarded from you know and it's because you realize like you know you're not going to take anybody bread crumbing you know, but you're coming off very guarded. You know, like I said, when you come out of something very traumatic, you're not just rushing right back into anything. So I do feel like you're guarded, but I do feel someone longs to feel your touch and you theirs, because look how these two are embracing one another. It's like somebody missed you. I feel like with you, we got um, AZ and this is called rather unique. So I feel like this is someone you have a very unique connection to. That's why I was picking up like the chemistry with you and this person is is very strong so this isn't just your typical oh i'm attracted to you there you know he's fine or she's fine it's like there's a more spiritual connection you know that you have with this person there is something very powerful about this connection and it's something that's felt energetically you could feel this you know words don't have to be spoken for you to feel how profound this connection is and I feel it's not just felt on your behalf. I feel like this person also feels it too because they're very intuitive, you know, as are you. And this two, two is the number of the divine masculine, which is the emperor. And then you have 57, which is the emperor. So this is how the person you're attracting feels and how they feel about you. So they, this you're attracting, like I said, you're pulling in your divine masculine, your divine feminine. So we have on the split, the five of swords and the um, seven of wands. So there could have been some sort of like really, you know, it, to me, it was like an argument, you know, some, some sort of disagreement. And that could be why there's no communication. Cause if you look at that sword, it's face down, you know, and, and, and perhaps someone said something prematurely you know, they just spoke without thinking, you know, and you're, you know, you handled this situation completely different than maybe they anticipated. 
because what we see here now is we got the chariot and the seven of wands so somebody is now you know maybe in the past they could have felt um a lack of confidence but now it's like they're rushing in towards you um with that chariot card and this person may surprise you if you're feminine and you know just arrive at your front door or they just may pop up in your dms or pop up in your 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 your, your um, messaging box and just say hey what's up you know because this person knows that there's a very unique connection between the two of you with the nine of chalices you know i am sensing like this person does find you to be like a wish fulfillment here you know and i do feel the two of you have um a very strong connection um I feel the feminine could be a little salty about some things. If you look at this feminine's energy, she's a little salty. She's kind of frowning, you know, but she's still leaning in, which means there's interest. And this masculine looks to be kind of like trying to explain something. It's something here that you could feel between these two, even if you can't hear the conversation. So it's like this is a spiritual connection, you know, even though she looks upset you know with this masculine like i said body language says it all these two are embracing so this is a rather unique connection and maybe there were some things that were said that someone really didn't take the time out to really think before they spoke and so they could have said something that was really taken the wrong way or you know misconstrued and maybe you ghosted someone or maybe they ghosted you and now someone wants to re-enter your life um I see with this Eight of Swords, remember I was picking up on the Eight of Swords here. This person can't stop thinking about whatever the intimacy was between you. If the two of you were intimate by any means, this person is like obsessing over that time, that moment. If you look off in the distance, there's the devil there. He looks like the devil to me, so I always call it the devil. And so the reason why I said they're obsessively thinking because the 71 health is like the eight of swords to me which is here so this is somebody really in their head thinking about you they have a lot of passion because right next to it is the new beginnings which is like the ace of wands so this is someone who has a long you know a very strong i should say attraction to you perhaps it's sexual in addition to the mental the emotional and the spiritual connection but maybe if you two were intimate at some point in time, or maybe this is just them thinking of what it would be like to be intimate with you, you know, to ra I'm hearing ravish. They want to ravish you. And I'm hearing a high tech. Um, all I need is you. So this person, they, they desire you. There's no questioning that. Um, they desire you on, you know, a sexual level in addition to, you know, that mental stimulation. Because you bring them happiness and joy. You know, they feel this, this happiness, this peace. This person feels like you fulfill them. Like you're, you, you provide a harvest. Like they could grow with you. They could plant seeds and roots with you, a family with you. You're all this person needs according to high tech. You know, I feel like this person may get high a lot, which is why they are not sure how to really communicate maybe it makes them paranoid getting a sense like somebody smokes a little too much herb and maybe they they get paranoid about this connection because with this 71 health it just makes me feel like you know somebody's really up in their head a lot you know ruminating pining so 77 spirituality is here because of the knight of wands so this is someone coming in rushing in and if you look on this card this is a masculine and a feminine and it's like, you know, this is a very passionate connection. I feel this person shares a lot of passion. You know, there's this burning desire to be with you. And I feel like it's a fruitful connection. There's a lot of wheat all around them. So this could lead to success. You know, the spirituality and this passion coupled together, it could lead to a very successful union. And on the bottom of the deck, we have the Six of Swords. So there is distance, which is why this person chooses to communicate with you telepathically or intuitively. You know, this person is at a distance from you. And this is why, you know, they desire, you know, this is why they probably spend a lot of time in their head, 
you know, thinking about this connection because you may have like relocated, moved away. Maybe you two live in two different places. Maybe you live about 400 miles from someone. You know, I heard 400, 4,000. Wow, 4,000 miles. Wouldn't that be another country? <laughs> but this is somebody that lives very far or lives at a distance. Maybe a four hour drive, you know, maybe two hour drive. Maybe two cities, two towns down, two cities over four. Uh, you know, it's just like there's a distance. Somebody would have to get in the car, put on a playlist to get to you. And it's going to be more than an hour drive. It's going to be at least two, two, three hours, four, two to four hours long of a drive, you know. Um, and I feel like this distance was it was created by, you know, you, Scorpio. You know, and now this person is realizing all they need is you. You know, so let's see. Why is intuition here for the person? Scorpio is attracting. May I have a message of love and light? Why is intuition here for the person? Scorpio is attracting. May I have a message of love and of light? Why is intuition here for the person? Scorpio is attracting. Thank you, spirit. Where did that go? Thank you. And so we have the knave of swords, page of swords. So this person's watching you. They're keeping tabs. This is definitely somebody is like a secret admirer and they're keeping tabs on you and they're watching you and you don't even know it. This person has an, uh, a freaking obsession with your ass also. They love your booty. It's like they, they just like if you are ever around them, when you walk guaranteed, they're like staring at your behind. They think you got a fatty boo. You got a fatty. And we have Janet Jackson. Would you mind? So this person definitely, um, they could be looking at pictures of you too. I don't know if you took, you know, some sort of raunchy photos in the past. You know, maybe when you was younger, somebody, you know, convinced you to take some little sexy photos. But they still got them photos. They probably lied and said, oh, no, I lost them. I don't know where they are. They probably got them because I see somebody like really looking at somebody's photos and the booties all tooked over and you know it could have been some raunchy po photos i remember back around like the time when all these um cameras and you know people was doing a whole lot it was doing the most <laughs> so you know i remember a couple of folks a couple of celebrities got caught out there when there was this whole um iCloud um that got um hacked into and there was a whole lot of celebrities getting caught out there but um, yeah, I feel like this person definitely has some photos you may know about or may not know about. And they just obsessively walk, they look at, look at them things every night. I feel like they look at them every night and they please themselves. Because this song that's playing by Janie Jackson is like, she is like very breathy, very sexual. Um, and it's called Would You Mind? So this person really is... Um, and she, she just said, would you mind tasting me? Would you mind undressing me? So I feel like this person is like, they don't mind doing none of that. It's like they want to taste every inch of your body is what I'm getting from this. First, you're behind. Like, they just want to just kiss your ass and spank it. Like, it's just part of me. This is raunchy. Oh, man. But that's that's literally what I'm seeing here. This is the sexual tarot. So, you know, it's going to get a little raunchy. But right here, we have the nine of wands. So this is how they feel your energy is towards them. You're very guarded. You know, the nine of wands is typically very guarded. Um, but I do feel like they've been through a lot as well. And it looks like you're you're opening up to them, you know, because when I look at this nine of wands, I see like this person, this could be them, you know, kind of on this journey. And then finally, you know, having some sort of illumination and clarity and then coming to you and expressing their feelings. I see these doves. So it's like they want to rekindle this connection because they realize this, the profound, you know, attraction they have, this, this, this sexual attraction, this, this, se this sexual and spiritual connection they feel with you. Maybe this is also saying that this person is thinking about you. You know what I'm saying? And they may have a karmic that's kind of like trying to distract them 
because if you look at this masculine, he's all like, not to say that if you got a beard that you're like stressed out and overwhelmed, but like the way that I'm interpreting it is just the only, re you know, that's the only reason why I'm saying it like this, because I love me a man with a beard. Oh, man. But um, this masculine looks like he's beat. He's tired. And then she's just kind of throwing herself all over him. And I feel like he's in, a, in, in another mind. And this mind is like, you need to go and find, you know, what you're truly passionate about. Because this isn't it anymore. You know, it's almost like he's tired. He's overwhelmed. He's burnt out. And then she's just like all over him. And he clearly looks like he just wants to exit. Like he just wants to be somewhere else, you know. He's, he's, you know, kind of like he's holding her, but it almost looks like he's trying to push her off of him, you know. And with would you mind, it's like, would you mind like giving me some space is what I'm gathering. Because it seems like what they really want to do is, you know, because this, this, this situation is tied, it's done, you know. And they want to come towards you because this is what I see. This looks like the hermit to me, you know, or maybe even, you know, um, even just, um, you know, the Knight of Wands or someone that's really passionate, looking for, you know, that new beginning, that new start. Because with this fire over his crown chakra, I just feel like he's illuminated, like he had some sort of epiphany, like, like something hit him. He got to download that quick. And remember, we saw the completion card earlier, which was nine. So it's like. This is like the completion of a cycle. Like it's hitting them like, yo, this is done, done, Finn. Because we're about to clarify how they feel about you, you know, or, and, and, you know, they're realizing like you're the divine feminine. You're the one, you know. So let's see. Why is teaching and learning 57 here for how the person Scorpio is attracted and feel about our beloved Scorpio? We have a message of love and light. Thank you, Spirit. I got two messages. Thank you. And so we see the Six of Pentacles. See? So there was some breadcrumbing. See how this person is coming in in the middle of the night? So this is like given to two people. Remember, we had decisions. And then you got the Ten of Swords. So the Six of Pentacles and the Ten of Swords. They feel that you have, you feel betrayed, which is why they was picking up the fact that you're a little guarded. And then we have um, LL Cool J. Hey, lover. So this is why this person could be like up in their head because they could have betrayed you. You know, they could have betrayed you for this other person. You know, they could have been kind of impulsive, flighty and unreliable also in the past. Which because I, I, you know, remember we had Ghost 97 mentality um, featuring Ghostface. And I was just picking up like somebody was, you know, perhaps maybe they were ghosted or they ghosted you or you ghosted them. And with this Ten of Swords, you know how they feel about you is the six of pentacles and the ten of swords that is not only an energy of you know feeling breadcrumbed but i feel like they also know they got they got duped by someone you know with this strange fruit you got the apple here and remember the story of adam and eve you know i don't feel those are like actual stories i feel like they're more just you know it's, it's, it's more you got to take it metaphysically but this right here is showing me you know, that there was a betrayal, like you felt betrayed and you've learned from an experience. Because if you look through this window, she sees that her lover is with a whole other woman. So, you know, maybe, you know, with hey lover, maybe this person will reach out and, and explain to you what was happening or explain to you what happened in the past. But there's still no communication. I also feel like this person is in a, a partnership, a marriage. And they're going to have to break someone else's heart. But they know they also broke your heart. With this Three of Pentacles, I'm strongly feeling like this person knows that they want to return. This is how they feel about your connection. Like they can see themselves cooking with you, cleaning with you, laughing. Like this is a happy house. This is domestic harmony to me. When two people are in the kitchen cooking the meal together, laughing, you know, watching movies together, going on trips, doing recreational outings. Not this one's going out and then... You're going with your girls and it's just like it's more of a domestic harmony, which means you work better together. 
that's your team. You, you, you act and function and move as a unit. And so I feel like you felt breadcrumbed. You felt, you know, shortchanged in this connection. And then there was an ultimate betrayal because you was also dealing with a karmic that could have cheated and lied on you. And with Hey Lover, I feel like, you know, now this person may reach out and communicate to express to you what changed, to express to you why they may have ghosted you or why this situation just, it was the wrong timing. Because I see someone wanting to return, wanting to collaborate, wanting to, you know, rekindle this connection. So why is five here for, for the what's hidden in the energy? Why is change five here for what's hidden in the energy? And we got the nine of swords. See, I was saying this person was up in their head about it. So they're up in their head about reaching out and communicating. Like they're trying to figure out how do they say the first word to you? Like how do they open up the communication, the dialogue? Because they know you have an arsenal of things that you could potentially clap at them about, you know? But their ego and their pride and their stubbornness is like, it's, it's preventing them from, from reaching out and saying how they truly feel. Because this five deals with the throat chakra, which is the, you know, this is how you communicate and express yourself. And with this nine of swords here, it's like they want to say what they want to say, but they're just refusing to. But this person definitely suffers from insomnia, you know, restless nights. But I do feel this person will eventually, you know, get out of this state. They may reach out. They may call you. You know, they may pen you a letter. And I feel like you know this intuitively. You're picking up on it. You know, you're picking up on the fact that this person is thinking of you because you're very psychic. But there is absolutely no communication at this time. And then we have um, Tiana Taylor, Gonna Love Me, featuring Ghostface Killer and Method Man and Raekwon. So, yeah, you know, manifesting a new love, manifesting a real love. This is someone that's going to rush in. This is someone that has marriage on the brain. You know, and I was picking up somebody who had like maybe addictions. Because I see this person, he looks like he's like forcing this liquor down her throat. And that could just be the addictions of someone getting high. I'm hearing liquid courage. But with this manifestation, I do feel like something is coming quicker than you know. Like it's coming in and it's a wish fulfillment. It's a blessing. It's something that... It, you're being rewarded with because as we see here with the Ten of Swords, you know, you had to complete some sort of like karmic lesson and you were being mistreated in that connection. You was being treated like an option, you know, and not a priority, period. And so with this Eight of Wands, you're going to have someone more attentive, someone emotionally intelligent, someone more affectionate and caring and kind. You know, and this is something you've manifested. Why is this eight manifestation here for what's hidden in the energy, divine spirit, love and light? Why is the eight? Thank you so much. And we have, we have the ten of chalices. I can't make this up. So you're manifesting this, you know, beautiful, emotional, grounded and emotionally fulfilling connection. You know, this is exactly what I was picking up. Like with this pink here as well. You know, that's the heart chakra. It's root color, you know, the color of the heart chakra as is green. So I do feel like, you know, the, the healing you've done, you've learned to heal yourself. And because you've learned to heal yourself, you now can attract what you are. This is like like attracting like. And this isn't just any old typical person. This is someone that is absolutely going to be just as devoted to the connection, just as loving and caring and kind, attentive and affectionate and honest and loyal. You know, loyalty is huge for you, especially after you've been, you know, kind of like treated like an option and betrayed and cheated on and lied to. It's like that. That's like a deal breaker for you if someone um, isn't loyal. But this person here is very loyal. You know, this is someone that's going to, you know, fulfill all of your needs. Someone that's going to be very attentive. And I feel like this ten of pent this ten of chalices is showing me like, you know, because that re reduces to the ace pretty much. So this is like the divine, as I said, conspiring. This is what's written in the end, you know, the stars. This is what's hidden that you don't know, but yet you know. It's like there's a knowingness, but you don't see it with your naked eye. You can 
feel it, you know, you can feel it on its way in. And we have the two of chalices and we're about to clarify spiritual partnership. So this is a deep connection. This isn't just, you know, sex and, and that's it. This is a spiritual connection. You're going to have all of the aforementions, great sex, great, com um, you know, um, stimulating conversations, a great spiritual partner. You're going to have a best friend. You're going to have a great mother or father to your child. You know, you're going to have a great partner, someone solid, someone protective of you, someone that's caring, grew, grounded and rooted on, you know, morals and principles and values that align with your own. So this is, you know, what you have here, someone that's going to give to you equally. This is equal give and take, you know, and a partnership is just that. You know, a union. That's what I was saying. Like you want somebody that you could bounce ideas off of, someone that you could grow with and, and, and build with. This person loves you. And we have um, we have, like I said, Tiana Taylor, and this is called going to love me. So this person is really going to love you and they're going to love you. Right. Is what I heard. Correction. Love you. Right. And the spiritual partnership is because they're spiritually connected they're also spiritually aligned so this isn't somebody just coming in looking to exploit and use and betray and backstab and play games and manipulate this is someone who's learned you know how to be a better version of themselves as well who's had to also go through you know similar experiences of betrayal hurt and pain you know and now they've evolved and they've emerged as someone different and they're going to treat people the way they want to be treated. So why is spiritual partnership here for what's um, the outcome for my beautiful Scorpios? Thank you, spirit. So this one wants to show and I got these two. So I got this one showed up. So we got the seven of wands. So this is someone that may, you know, return, you know, after you you know, kind of put your guard down after you surrender a little bit, because I feel like, you know, both of you all are guarded. This person's not communicating. They're in hermit mode or you could be in hermit mode guarded, you know, but there's a sense of guardedness. The seven of wands is showing me that. But I do feel like this is an exciting change, you know, that you're on the precipice of because that 27 nine is telling me someone is coming fresh out of being in isolation or being, you know, detached or disconnected from, you know, the rest of the outside world. And it's because they've gained some sort of clarity about something. And I do feel like there's going to be this reconnection, you know, like two people are going to reunite with one another. And this is going to lead to an exciting new beginning, an exciting time. So I see the four of swords here. And this is clarifying the 888 abundance. So this shows me like you are, you know, you've healed yourselves. And we have Lonnie Liston, and this is called Quiet Moments. So during your quiet moments, I feel like you've really been doing a lot of healing. You know, with this 88 abundance, I feel this is speaking to you and your person. So it's almost like showing me like teaching and learning, learning and teaching. It's like the energy could be, you know, flipped, you know, because with the 88, this is like mirroring. So you're mirroring your person, your person's mirroring you. The four of swords is really about, you know, kind of like recuperating, rejuvenating, um, recharging your batteries after going through a painful loss, like the three of swords, you know? So when you go through that three of swords experience, it really takes a lot out of you. And so it's very necessary to lick your wounds and to find your grounding, you know, to get grounded. Um, and so that's what I feel both of these individuals were doing. You know, it's like he's he's pouring water into her mouth, like trying to help her to to become hydrated. Um, and I feel like the more he helps her, he's helping himself. So this is very symbolic of, you know, teaching and learning, which is what we have here. You know. So, as I said, you could be the student and the teacher at the same time. This is also saying like, you know, very much like, you know, the healing that you've taken the time out to do on yourself. Um, maybe this is speaking to, you know, like that masculine and feminine balance where, you know, when you felt, 
so weak you had to pull on nothing but your strength which is that masculine energy and the masculine energy is what you, got you out of something um you know very very toxic very painful so you had to find that balance you had to find you know how to pull on that energy when necessary and in doing so you you've become a great healer you know this 88 abundance is showing that not only have you healed yourself but you've also learned how to transmute negative energy how to be the conduit of change and also how to you know co-create with source so you've done a lot of work um quietly and privately because we have quiet moments playing so these were the quiet moments when you were healing you know because that 88 like i said that's like you and your person so both of you were in this space this is the outcome of like healing the connection um this could also speak to someone coming in that's going to heal your you know your broken heart your wounded heart you know someone that's coming in with the intention to make you believe in love again and this is absolutely someone that's going to give you an abundance of emotional fulfillment and satisfaction and joy and we did see that with the 10 of um, chalices here, which is what you've manifested. So let's see what else we got that flew out. And so we have the, what is this? So we have the five of wands. See that? So this is someone who's like, literally there's like some competitiveness, some competitiveness. You see how he's looking out at this woman in this masculine. So maybe someone else, like I said, was in a karmic relationship and discovered there was a third party. Or maybe there was something else coming in between a union. But I do feel like this mental health is really like self-deception as well. You know, knowing and seeing the red flags, but ignoring them. Um, the five of wands definitely tells me this competition. Um, and, you know, this person is now kind of like, you know, ruminating and pining and feeling almost like a prisoner, you know, imprisoned by their thoughts of regret and frustration. But I feel they will make a decision to leave um, whatever this toxicity is, making that decision, knowing that they don't want to be a part of any type of triangular anything. We have Nipsey Hussle, Rising Power King, uh, and this is called Victory Lap. So this person will get the victory. There will be a major victory breakthrough. Um, and I feel like it comes in the form of just that grand epiphany, you know, that aha moment, that moment of clarity, almost looking in the mirror. If you look, there's a mirror there. So it's like they'll realize that, you know, this connection is not, um, isn't necessarily um, the most, um, this isn't the most, uh, ideal connection for them. I feel like they know that there's, you know, one that, you know, there's someone that really mirrors them, uh, mind, body, and soul. And that's why right next to that energy, and this could even be your energy. That's why there's this new beginning energy because someone is making a decision. They saw what they needed to see. It's almost like the truth was revealed. So whatever, you know, they, they started out deceiving themselves until the truth was revealed to them, you know, because this 71, that's the eight of swords. So this is like, you know, self-deception that, that spirals into, you know, uh, uh, imprisonment of the mind. You know, the gaslight in the mind, uckery, um, the confusion, the delusion. And finally, it's like spirit is like, do you see now, you know, like what's been going on? Um, and so now this person can muster up the strength, courage and wisdom to walk away. We have the queen of wands. So someone seems to be making a decision to walk away from someone who potentially had them in handcuffs. You know, the victory lap is they're going to be able to uh, part ways with this this queen of wands who could have been just using, you know, uh, that that succubus incubus energy, even if it's a king of wands. This is someone who, you know, everything has to go their way. You know, it's my way or the highway. They can be very controlling, very domineering, um, very possessive. Um, and I feel like someone is l really starting to recognize that, you know, maybe all they have with this person is just sex or just um, intimacy and not even intimacy because that's a positive word, but it's just sex. You know, it's just a lot of ucking going on. And, you know, and they're looking at this person because this 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 feminine energy, um, they could have confused 
you know, the love, you know, the lust for love. And that's why they have this new beginning, because now it's like they want to leave this behind. It's like they want to leave it behind and they want to come towards what's going to bring not only emotional fulfillment, but just fulfillment overall. The Ten of Pentacles is the epitome of happy house, happy spouse, happy life. You know, that's really what, you know, the the goal is, is to have, you know, just a very satisfying and fulfilling life, not having to worry about much, you know, knowing you have a solid partner, feeling very stable and safe and grounded within your relationship, knowing you have a partner that's going to collaborate, you know, going to invest and build that legacy with you. And that's what this Ten of Pentacles is saying. So this is someone that really sees your worth and value, sees you as someone worthy of coming after. Um, and I feel like they're no longer phased. Maybe in the past they was phased um, by what the naysayers said, or maybe they're fake friends or whatever. But it's like now they're not even phased. It's like we got um, MF Doom. So maybe these people made them feel like, you know, it was like it was doom and gloom. Like if they just left a situation behind, um, it would be, you know, it would be a bad situation. Like it, things wouldn't work out or maybe they was just making them feel guilty. But I feel like ultimately they, they started to just, you know, phase out of, of the mind uckery and the tricknology. And it's possible that somebody could have done something because that Queen of Wands can be very uh, persistent, um, you know, and very controlling, like I said. So let's go ahead. We're going to pull some messages from my deck. Um, let's see what we got here. I'm going to get my deck. Let me see. All my cards. All right. So what's on the bottom of this deck? What's that? Uh, forgive me, I know I broke your trust, is what it says on the bottom of the deck. And so, yeah, maybe they broke your trust because they could have been, you know, in and out. That's what the Knight of Wands is. They're very passionate, very fiery, very, you know, very lustful, you know. And, and, and um, you know, maybe that was a phase for them. Maybe, maybe they was going through, I'm here, I heard midlife crisis. But if they're not old enough to go through a midlife crisis, they was just very immature, you know, very, very, very young minded, you know, um, so they know they broke your trust with spirituality, seven, seven, maybe they've leveled up, they've grew up a little bit. What's underneath that spiritually guided, divinely protected. So they was receiving downloads, you know, cause that seven, seven is showing me that, you know, they are, um, you know, receiving those divine interventions and I see here higher frequency. So they are, they've matured. I get a sense of someone maturing, um, growing up, realizing the error in their ways, realizing they've made a mistake. So let's see what we got coming and going out, going on. Yeah. And they could have been going through a phase. Maybe they had like, um, you know, maybe some, some mommy issues, you know, maybe they had a very estranged relationship with a mother. Maybe they didn't know how to love. Maybe this is someone that's Dealing with a mother, dealing with a very um, difficult mother, overbearing mother that used to be very intrusive when it came to their relationships, their love ships. Maybe they were trying to appease the mothers. Maybe you have a different spiritual or religious background and someone's mother was getting in someone's ear. And that's why they were kind of in and out because maybe they didn't see how this connection could grow. The divine wants you to be thankful. This is the attitude of gratitude for surviving all that you have. And we have um, you called and told me by Jeff Red. So somebody is going to call and tell you something. Maybe they that's where the communication kind of went left where someone could have said some things they regret now. And it says put you in your needs first. It says put you in your needs first from this moment forward. So that could be what you did when you realized someone else wasn't prioritizing you, you know, making you an option, like I said. So with you called and told me, somebody could have called you and was speaking reckless on the phone, saying things. And um, you just decided in that moment that that's where you, conversation was going to end. And you may not have spoken to that person ever since. 
So he said, I'm sorry that you're feeling this way. You know I'm not the same. And he said, why do you keep on running and playing these simple games? So that sounds like somebody who's flighty, just like this Knight of Wands. So the bottom of the deck, it says, use your first eye to see, not your two. They will deceive you. And that's what spirituality is. Your crown chakra led you to realize that someone that you were really invested in, you know, they, they was letting you know, like, look, this person is not invested, you know. So he says, you called and told me that you wanted to leave, but it seems that you don't want to leave me. And so that's what a player does. You know, a player is always going to try to keep their options open while still holding on. And I feel like for a long time, you was trying to give somebody a bene the benefit of the doubt because there was a lot of perhaps, you know, a, a strong bond or a strong connection. But spiritually, psychically, intuitively, you know, you were being told something was wrong. And what was wrong was this person was like flighty. They was, you know, they had all kind of love options. And so you could have walked away or left the situation behind that wasn't serving your highest good because you was picking up on, you know, the energy of that person. With empath, I feel deeply, you was really picking up on the energy and the vibration that somebody was giving off. Um, I feel this person you're, you're attracting to you is also an empath. Um, and that's why they're able to pick up on your energy and they know that you're not <laughs> about the games. So why is intuition and the knave of swords here? Because this person is absolutely spying. They've been watching. They've been getting an eyeful, you know, kind of studying you. So we got black tourmaline, Florida water, Palo Santo, sage, singing bowl, candles. So this person absolutely um, is trying to protect themselves, you know. They're trying to protect themselves perhaps because of a karmic, you know, they, they're feeling very much like they need to protect themselves. And, it, and these are like spiritual means of protection. So maybe they could feel like they're under some sort of psychic attack or some sort of um, energetic debris. You know, there could be something kind of attacking them. Their auric debris, like just if you're very empathic and sensitive, you're going to just naturally draw some 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 heaviness to you you know because you're, you're sensitive you're picking up on things so it's really important to kind of you know cleanse your energy but i feel your person is is feeling the need to protect themselves which is why they're kind of watching you and hiding because the knave of swords is showing that they're spying you know and it says you left me in my darkest times that betrayal was unbe unbreakable i mean unbearable excuse me and so this is what this energy is this person knows that they kind of abandoned you maybe made you feel you know kind of devalued and you know now it's like this person really sees who you truly are you know with i see you this i see you message came out in the reading before the last so this person now sees you in this divine feminine because 57 reduces to 12 which is three now they see you as that divine feminine the empress they see you as the emperor the divine masculine like very powerful very much a master manifester, abundant, successful, nurturing, loving, caring, down to earth, a ma uh, you know, a healer. Like they see that you've really transformed. You've gone through some sort of transformation, some sort of shift in your own consciousness. Your frequency is on a higher vibration. So now they see you. They also see the error in their ways when they abandoned you and left you for whatever these options were. You know, it's like. They didn't put enough time and energy. They was running from the connection. And then on top of it, they got caught out there. And so now this person sees you in your authenticity. And so we have right now fight for you. Uh, and this is by Rico Love. So now they want to fight for you because now they realize they can establish this happy house with you. With the nine of swords, this is what they're riddled with, you know, how to change this situation, how to communicate that they want to change this connection, this relationship from being estranged to being, you know, one of domestic harmony, one of this happy house, happy spouse. You bring them happiness, you know, and this person is trying to muster up the words because, like I said, you can see there's like a pencil here on the wall. This looks like some sort of, you know, um, antique phone, if that's a phone. I don't know what it is. And then you got the sword energy. So it's like this person's really up in their head a lot like insomnia, suffering in silence, not communication. And that's all 
due to their own ego, their own blind ignorance, not wanting to express themselves. Maybe they have a lack of knowledge of self, but I feel this person does realize by, you know, beginning that healing process and learning to love themselves, they begin to know their worth. And what they realize is that their master manifest is as are you. They realize that this connection is a very powerful one. They realize that with you, they could have this, which is why they're willing to fight for you according to Rico love. So they want to fight for this connection because now they have this knowledge of self, which means they have this sense of knowingness. They know how powerful, how, you know, profound this connection is, how beautiful the synergy is between the two of you, how much of a wish fulfillment you actually are because you provide the Ten of Cups, which is the fulfillment, the elation, the joy, the harmony, the peace. With this, you left me in my darkest times. This is what this person's riddled with. The, 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 rum, the ruminating and pining is them knowing the reason why you're guarded with the Seven of Wands because they abandoned you. They abandoned you for whatever these lustful options were. And, you know, because remember, they was a little immature in the past, but now they have to face the music. It's almost like they got to face you. And they don't know who they're going to face because you've evolved since the last time that they've conversed with you. You've leveled up. You're no longer speaking to them. And so they've seen your, your growth, your glow up, your, your transformation the shifts, the pivots, they've seen all of that because they've still been watching in the distance, like, you know, kind of hiding in the background, watching you, you know, and learning and studying, which is why they've begun to process, um, you've begun their process of healing. So why is spirituality and seven of wands here for what's coming? Look at that. You left me in my darkest time. So doesn't this look like an embrace like this person apologizes and you finally let your guard down because this is a spiritual connection. So this person, he's going to fight for you according to Rico Love. Because he says, you better hope that N, N is going to fight for you because I'm down to fight for you. So this is showing me like with this spiritual partnership, this is a preordained, destined love. This is destiny. Remember Mary J. Blige had the song destiny you know searching for my destiny searching for what makes me happy forget what other thinks of me got to be happy finally happy so and, and i know i'm chopping up the lyrics but you could go online look it up i'll probably put the link in the description but this is what this person was doing they were searching for their happiness and you know everybody has to do that you know this we're all on our own journeys and you know in the process of searching for your happiness you may break some hearts you know you may hurt some folks, you know, and, and sometimes it's intentional. People know what they're doing. And some people just don't have the emotional intelligence to sit you down and explain to you what their journey is, what they're experiencing. People just really don't have that type of intelligence, which, why, which is why it tends to come off like, you know, they're, they're selfish, they're narcissistic, because everybody doesn't have emotional intelligence. But I feel now that this person has been healing and has been growing and has been you know, through similar experiences as you, they've kind of like felt the pain they've caused. So when you feel the pain you've caused others, you're now more mindful when you go out in the world, when you deal with people's hearts, you're going to be more mindful to be honest. And so that's what I feel this person is doing now. Now they're willing to fight for you because they realize how profound this connection is. They're going to apologize. This embrace is showing me that this masculine or this feminine has extended an apology. And there's going to be open and honest communication. Someone's going to say, you left me in my darkest times when I really needed you. Weren't, you weren't there. And so there's going to be crying. There's going to be this embrace. But then there's going to be this decision to that you're going to have to make. Because remember, decisions was playing earlier by my daughter. And so right now we have Abi Okai. And this is called running. So this was a runner chaser dynamic. Someone was running from the connection, which is why they abandoned someone else. And it was because they couldn't handle the level of, you know, the, 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 this connection. They couldn't handle how powerful this connection was. And this is because they were tied to someone or something that made them feel very stuck. Like a karmic is going to make you feel that 
that's like an energy vampire, a parasite, a leech. That's someone that's like a succubus or incubus energy. Someone you have attachments to, that codependent energy. So that's where the Four of Swords is now. The Four of Swords is saying that there's this healing that's taking place after being in the stuck energy. And now after being in that stuck energy and feeling stagnant and feeling the lack of, of um, you know, abundance, now it's coming in. So this abundance is coming because, again, wish fulfillment is being granted because you get past this, this hurdle here where there's this, you know, this, you know, it's almost like a face off or it's just like, you know, you and someone else is just making the decision to not communicate out of ego, out of pride. But finally, when you have that conversation and how you really felt, you know, is expressed. Now there's this, this, you know, this, um, this reconciliation that could take place because it's obvious someone was running because we have Abi Okai playing running. So with the four of swords, you know, now they want to give you love. You know, he's kind of pouring water and water is healing. So it's like they're trying to heal this connection. The masculine is taking initiative to heal this connection. And they're going to make a decision to move on from something that doesn't work for them anymore. You know, they're going to leave that situation. They may forget walking away. They're going to run away from that connection because it's not healthy. So why is manifestation and the four of swords here for the outcome for my beloved Scorpios? Divine spirit of love and light. Why is manifestation and the four of swords? Thank you, spirit. And we have mine on my money, money on my mind. So someone's really focused on their stability after being betrayed, after being backstabbed. Someone could have been dealing with someone who was just dealing with them for, you know, their finances or for stability. And I feel like when someone runs away, walks away, leaves a connection, this could have been the runner, you know, in the scenario of runner or chaser. This could have been the one that was running. They was really just focused on their coins, you know, maybe money motivated and now they're going to return and they're going to be more focused on the love the emotions let me get one more card to clarify that bottom of the deck it says what doesn't kill you makes you stronger so someone has learned a lesson in this process i feel like somebody was really you know like out there hustling for the money not hustling in terms of doing something bad but just grinding working hard putting in all these extra hours and they just felt like very deprived in terms of like their emotion their love their like their personal life was lacking whereas money might have been really good and so now it's like with this abundance i feel like there could be abundance of emotional fulfillment in addition to financial fulfillment if someone makes the decision to try to um, heal a connection and be honest and take onus and accountability, you know, to how something broke down, a relationship broke down. Maybe this was designed to teach them that money isn't everything, you know, that you need to focus on your relationships, your connections. Um, why is abundance the four of swords and what doesn't kill you makes you stronger came back out. So somebody learned a very valuable lesson um, about materialistic possessions that, you know, money ain't going to go with you when you leave, you know, and, and money can, is very necessary. It's valuable. It's an energy. Um, but there's nothing more valuable than, you know, love, you know, and I feel like that's what somebody's realizing is like, um, you know, they need to, you know, they, they need to invest. And it says where your attention goes, energy flows. So somebody was really focused on money and, and that's why they have this abundance here. So they may be financially set, but emotionally like they're, they're, they're like really, um, I feel like they're really in, a, in, in the, uh, you know, traumatized. They're emotionally traumatized. And so they're, they're, they're finally coming into this awareness and taking onus and accountability with the four of swords. So suffering, you know, heartache, loss, pain has brought someone to the realization like they need to like heal. They need to repair, you know, they need to go back to the drawing board. Money isn't everything. They're realizing they don't know much about love. Like they have no emotional intelligence because we have John B. They don't know. So somebody's realizing they don't know anything about love, but when it comes to money, 
They, they may know everything they need to know about money, but the, the love, and that's confirmation. So where your attention goes, energy flows. So maybe they got fat pockets is what I'm hearing. But when it comes to love, they're like, they're like in, an infant. You know, it's like they have no emotional intelligence. I just want to get one more message. <laughs> All right. Thank you, spirit. See, mindsets, they're, they're mentally disturbed when it comes to the topics of love or emotion. You know, they're a little mind upped, you know. This is like being a little confused. And this is also somebody that's absolutely, you know, having a lot of intimate thoughts, you know. A lot of intimate thoughts. See, they're at a distance from you as well. That train was also indicating distance travel. And I was picking up on that earlier. But this person is at a distance from you. And I do feel like this person will, you know, eventually take some sort of action to come, you know, toward you or to approach you or to communicate with you. Why is the 71 health, the five of wands here for the outcome? And it says first eye. So that's what this person is doing now. They're not in their mind so much. They're getting out of their mind and they're starting to trust their intuition. They're starting to use discernment because whatever they thought they knew, they're learning that they didn't know. You know, and if you have like a faulty belief system and you're dealing with people that's trying to like gaslight, manipulate, or you're living in an illusion of some sorts, because that's what this also could say, like mind sex is like, you know, delusionment. It's like it's mind uckery, you know, and so now they're using their intuition. They're no longer imprisoned. They're no longer thinking of themselves as victims. Now they're using intuition and they're starting to see all of the fakeness around them. And remember, we had this queen of wands that this person seems to be looking at, like, you know, really assessing this person's motives. Like I said, this could have been just a lustful connection. We see the um, handcuffs on the table. So they're feeling like that was the person keeping them stuck all along, tying them down. Remember when we first touched the deck, we saw individuality. And remember, this could be your energy. This could be someone you're attracting. But I feel strongly like somebody was tied down to something. And with, they don't know. They didn't know initially. But now that they're trusting their intuition and using discernment, they can see very clearly what this connection was and what it was rooted in, which could have been sex, lust, drugs, rock and roll. With Fugazi, someone was a fraud. And... They was dealing with a fraud and they realizing that you, Scorpio, you're unlike anyone they've ever met or dealt with. But this Fugazi person, this 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 snake, you know, this this incubus succubus energy, this frenemy, this this liar, cheater. It's like now they see them clearly and they are really, truly looking to move away from that. So why is the new beginnings, the Queen of Wands here for the outcome for my beloved Scorpios? That could be like a mistress. That could be like that karmic energy or a Mr. Stress. See that? Illusions, delusions, faulty foundations. So there's going to be a tower moment. And we have Mary J. Blige. Keep your head to the sky is what they say in the hook. But it's called keep your head up. So, or keep your head. That's what it's called, keep your head. So it says put you in your needs first. So that's what this person is going to do. That's why they're going on this new voyage. And remember, we saw this in the beginning when we first touched the deck. Angel numbers, they're getting signs and synchronicities, downloads, divine interventions, transmissions. This is what they're receiving. They're receiving the downloads from spirit. And they're going to take some time out to rest and rejuvenate, to recuperate, to recalibrate. And this is what's going to give them the grand epiphany where they're trusting their intuition. They got the 22 intuition and they also have this first eye here. So I feel like your person is literally starting to see everything as clear as day because it had been hidden for so long because they were mind upped. They were gaslighted. They was dealing with an illusion. They was dealing with someone who was keeping them kind of like trapped mentally. Remember, we saw stuck and stagnant. So they was kind of trapped. But then when they started to do their own digging, their own research, they realized that somebody else, you know, was creeping with another person. There was some sort of betrayal, ritual work. There could have been someone doing some sort of voodoo, hoodoo, juju, santaria, black magic, white magic, some juju on that you, you. That's what was happening. Somebody was really doing something. And whereas in the interim of doing this, it's because someone knew 
that they had a more profound connection with you, Scorpio. So it's like this, this queen of wands is aware, you know, she's still a queen. She knows, you know, there's this light there. So it's almost as if she could see, you know, the connection. There's this sense of knowing how profound the connection was this person had with you and them inserting themselves in between this. And that's why this person the whole time has been told, use your first eye to see intuition, first eye. And so now we have ritual work. So now we see the root cause of the issue. Someone was being emotionally manip manipulated, psychologically manipulated and spiritually manipulated. So there could have been some sort of spiritually transmitted diseases that have been, you know, transmitted during some sort of sexual encounters that's what the incubus succubus energy really is also that's why people use sex as a weapon because it's literally like they could transfer that low vibrational energy and it keeps the masculine or the feminine that is receiving you know in a very low vibration but this is your divine masculine or feminine this is that person that you have a strong spiritual connection with and i feel your person eventually does wake up because with spirituality in the beginning as well as spiritual partnership, that means your person is spiritually aligned and spiritually strong. And they will eventually start waking up to the truth because they're going to start receiving the messages with keep your head up. That's like hope, optimism. That's also them starting the process of like healing themselves, grounding themselves, and also the great purge, releasing, letting go, and letting things just flow naturally. Rejection is for your protection. So there was a need for this connection to not form at the time that it did. I feel divine timing was always of essence. So if you do know this person, which I strongly feel you do, I feel like when you two got into union, I feel like, or when you reconnected or when you connected, the timing was always a factor, was always the wrong timing where you could have been kind of like in a connection, trying to break up with someone or still dealing with a karmic, or when you got back with them and you know, late years later, they were tied up. So it was like the timing was always a factor. And I feel like now because you had karmic completion and because they're now completing a cycle, the two of you are going to meet in the right timing. And so we have Oshun. This is called solar plexus. So the both of you are stronger now. You know, there's this knowingness, like I said, there's this assertiveness, this courage, this power, this strength. And this person will muster up that strength with solar plexus. That's where your strength, that's where the sun that shines within is. And so there's going to be this knowingness that, you know, you got to cut off what doesn't serve you. And whoever was rejected, you know, because I feel like somebody's going to realize that there was some sort of third party entities or some outside sources that were interfering in a union, they're going to realize that this was for their protection. They were part of an illusion and they're going to start loving themselves and they're going to take that time out just like the hermit and they're going to start assessing and soul searching, you know, and they're going to, they're going to find some self-awareness. So their fears is what's held them back. Maybe the fear of being alone. Remember, we have Mama Bear. So maybe they had an estranged relationship. Maybe they felt ab abandoned as a child. Maybe there was an absentee parent, mother or father. And so they clung to their relationships with everything they had. But it was still toxic. So this fear of being alone was only them living out their truth. Because even in the relationship that was toxic, they were still alone. So false expectations appearing real. That could also be the reason why they're not communicating because they are fearing the type of conversation or what's going to be said. And it's like they just have to take that leap of faith where your attention goes. Energy flows. They are thinking about you a lot, which is why you could be picking up on this energy intuitively, telepathically, psychically or vice versa. We're going to pull some messages from the goddess goddess and then we're going to wrap it up. So the bottom of the deck, look at that Lakshmi bright future. So you have a beautiful, bright future ahead of you. This is saying, stop worrying. Everything is going to be fine. So if you all are worried about your finances, you needn't worry about a thing because Mama Lakshmi is saying that everything is going to be handled fairly and justly. So I just saw independent and divine passion. So yeah, your independence is the foundation for your success, your strength, your stabilities. And like I said, something is erupting within you. Your passions, your desires on the split. We got golden opportunity and mama lakshmi so there is a beautiful golden door opening up for you as i said this is the reward this is the recognition this is the blessing from the divine 
the wish fulfillment. Remember, you got eight, eight, eight again in the reading. Um, you actually have eight, 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 eight. Um, but this is beautiful because it's just showing that you are, you know, really receiving some sort of wish fulfillment or a miracle will be taking place in your lives. Um, Artemis is telling us that you are spiritually protected. So whoever this is that's doing some sort of ritual work, spell work, the divine, your angels, they are absolutely protecting you, protecting your person, because I do feel this is a very spiritual partnership, as the card said. So when you have a spiritual partnership, that means there is a purpose. This is destined. So the divine is not going to let any negative or outside entity interfere with God's work. So with this energy, your angels, ancestors, spirit guides, deities are protecting you from some sort of spiritual attack, spiritual warfare. There's unconditional love that you are attracting to you as well. Someone that you attract, you will have unconditional love. There will be no conditions, meaning no judgments. They will love every part of you, every fabric of your being. They will love your mind, body, your soul. That's unconditional. So let's see. And there goes the boundaries. So you also have the, the, um, the infinite supply card, which is also telling you that you could look forward to having all of your needs, wants, and desires applied, you know, supplied for you. You are guarded, which is why this person was looking at you as, um, you know, very standoffish with the seven of wands, you know, kind of holding back uh, because you already felt abandoned by that energy. So you're very guarded. And so we have. Um, and we have the Internet, and this is called um, Only Girl in the World. And he just said, girl, they don't know of your worth. So whoever you was dealing with in the past didn't see your worth, didn't know your worth, didn't see your value. But it's like not only do you know your worth, but you also know your purpose now. I get a sense of you really coming into this awakening of discovering like why you're here, you know, in this world, in this reality, at this space and time. In this, you know, it's like you, you've realized or dis discovered what your soul's purpose is, what your mission is. You realize why you're here. And that's what you're, that's why you're not allowing just anybody to come in. And I feel like that's why you're being aligned with a spiritual partner. Because I feel like your spirituality is a very um, intricate part of who you are. It's, it's, it's just the most, you know, that's who you are in a nutshell, is spiritual. So you got bright future here. Latch me. So she, she opened up the reading and then this is your message. So you have a beautiful, bright future ahead of you. You also have Artemis saying that you are spiritually protected. So you have someone that's going to come in. Your angels and guides are assuring that you're going to have stability, security, happiness, love. You got the 888. So this is wish fulfillment. It's like whatever you've been manifesting throughout these past couple of years, even going through the dark night of the soul, you know, mustering up all of the, the, the strength to get through those difficult times, but still praying, still sending up petitions, still writing in your journals, still doing your work. It's like those prayers didn't fall on deaf ears. Your angels are absolutely saying, wish granted, you know, the, the, the miracles are going to start pouring in because you have double confirmation. This week alone, I pulled out the 888 cards and, and here it is again. And so you have Lakshmi saying you have a bright future. So there's nothing for you to worry about. Everything is going to be fine. In fact, my saying is everything is already all right, you know. And so with Guardian here, all those that could be trying to shoot you down, throw things at you, negativity, all the gossip, all the negative, you know, whatever it is they're doing, the defamation, you know, the smear campaign, it's only going to, you know, it's going to be a boomerang effect. Whatever they throw at you, they're going to get hit with, period. Because not only are you wise to the wickedness, but it's like your angels and guides see it. So they're going to protect you. They're going to shield you from it. And you have an impenetrable wall, fiery wall of protection already. So we have this Artemis. So that's saying you are spiritually protected. So let me get, I'm going to pull two more cards from the goddess guidance, divine spirit of love and light. What additional messages you have for my beloved Scorpios? I said two more and they was like, nah, take these. 
So we got Mother Earth. So you are much, a, you are very much a healer. You're very grounded, balanced, in alignment. It's like you are spiritually aligned. You are very connected to Mother Gaia. Some of you may have done release ceremonies. Like I said, we just celebrated um, Earth Day on Friday. And that day was two, 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 two. Like it was all twos. And I believe it reduced to 10, which means every ending denotes a new beginning. We're about to come into eclipse season. So it's like release, let go of whatever doesn't serve your highest good. Because if you don't settle those things, they will be settled, whether you prepare yourself or not. So it's best to do your own release ceremony. I feel like there's going to be a lot of transformations, a lot of transitions. There's going to be a lot of change and, and you got to brace yourself. But I feel like there's nothing for you to worry about, just as I said, because I feel like these are good changes. These are necessary changes that are coming in for you. And so look what you have again. You got expect a miracle. I can't make this up. This is the second time this card showed up when we pulled the eight and the 88 which is 888. Some of y'all could be seeing 888. Some of y'all could be seeing 777. Some of y'all could be seeing 666, 444, 1111, 999, 333, 222. But expect a miracle, beloveds. Just as I said, you have a wish fulfillment. This is the second time in a, a matter of a couple of days since I've done the reading. And make sure to create boundaries. Don't let anybody take you off your square. Remember, we was talking about the empress and the emperor sitting on their throne. Do not step down off your throne to deal with peasantry or ignorance. All right. Let your angels remember Artemis said that you are spiritually protected. So let your angels, your guys, your deities, let them fight those battles. The spiritual warfare is won by them. You could protect yourselves, spiritual baths, do your smudging naturally, um, um, you know, daily, um, make sure you cleanse your homes. You know what I'm saying? Do those things. Those, that's how you could counter um, any type of spiritual attacks. But let your angels and your ancestors fight those battles for you. You call upon them and you ask them to fight the battle. But this boundaries is necessary. You got to create boundaries and make sure that you're not just a yes man saying yes to everybody. I know that's not the case here because most of you Scorpios, like I said, are in this divine feminine energy or divine masculine energy. So your energy right now and your time is like currency. So you're not allowing everybody to just come in and, and dibble, dibbing and dabbing off of you, like, you know, leeching off. You're not doing that no more. So you are very guarded. This could be telling me that you're very guarded. Some of you could be working with the deity Ishtar, Mother Mary, or Lakshmi at this present time. Some of you could have been doing like a prosperity ritual with Mama Lakshmi. Some of you have been calling on Mother Mary for a miracle. Maybe if you've fallen ill or you've had some sort of, you know, um, unfortunate or misfortunate circumstances, like you've been asking and praying for some sort of miracle. And she's saying your wish is going to be granted. Your miracles are going to be granted because your prayers have been heard. But you have to love yourself to say no. If people call you up asking for this, asking for that, trying to pull on your energy, tugging on your energy in time, let them know do not cross this boundary. When I'm ready for you, I'll call for you. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm not ready for you right now. So I'll, I'll holler at you when I'm in the mood. Next, you have prosperity. Look at this. You can't make this up. Prosperity has come out. And this is also veggie backing off the abundance, manifestation, bright future, expect a miracle, blessings upon blessings. So not only do you have manifestation and abundance but you also have abundance he is saying that the universe is going to bless you with this abundance all you have to do is just be open to receive because it's yours you got to claim it and affirm it as i said in the better, very beginning of the reading if you want to be one of those people that's saying you know what you're not going to get and what you're not looking for after the cards are literally telling you what's coming in then you'll just miss the boat but everybody else affirm and claim <laughs> because this is your birthright. This is not by happenstance. Remember, we had destiny playing earlier. So the divine is letting you know this is destined to happen. This is the wheel turning in your favor. Whatever was stuck and stagnant, whoever was putting a stick in your wheel, the stick has been removed. The universe has removed the stick so the wheel can start moving in your favor so things could start turning and so the blessings can start flowing to you so prosperity abundantia is pouring out these blessings this wish fulfillment 
Mother Mary is blessing you with a miracle. Lakshmi is telling you you need not worry. You have abundance. You have manifestation. A lot of this is your own doing because you've stayed persistent and resilient in the process. You didn't allow yourselves to get stuck in that sunken place of sorrow and ruminating and pining and self-loathing. You may have cried your tears and you may still cry, but you keep going. That's what makes you strong and that's what separates you from the rest because you don't look at yourself as a victim. If anything, you use every circumstance to improve, to be better, and you learn from them, which is why you're always the, the scene is that Phoenix rising because you know how to transmute energy. You are the conduit of change. And not only do you change your life and circumstance, but you change everyone's lives around you. And that's the power that you possess as a Scorpio. Artemis is also here. So Artemis is telling you. So see this. These are the cards, bottom of the deck, Mawu. So those were the cards that flew out and I'm taking all of those. Those were your messages. So we have guardian. So this is all double, triple confirmation because these are the very same cards we saw during the shuffle. Lakshmi and guardian were the two cards that showed up during the shuffle. And we also saw boundaries and expect a miracle was in the former reading. So you are very blissed. You have blessings coming in and it's because you've graduated. Right underneath that cycles and rhythms and we see that yep, you've graduated all right There goes the endings and beginnings, which is pretty much like the world card in this deck And so all of the old has to be pushed out, which is what this eclipse is about to do It has to be released. It has to be let go so that all the new beautiful abundant energy can flow to you and cycles and rhythms is only veggie backing on that You have to release you got to purge trust the on trust and honor the cycles, the rhythms, how your body feels. And then ground yourself, root yourself, you know, get rooted. This is beautiful. And we have, um, and we have the family stand. This is called ghetto heaven. So stand up for what you believe in. Stand up for your family. Protect your family. Protect, you know, protect the sanctity of family, marriage. Maybe that's what you're rooted in. You know, you're rooted in those principles. So let's see what else we have. Should I get any more? I think we're good. I think we're good to go. Spirit is like, no, nah, you good. You are good, good. So this was your reading, beloved Scorpios. Definitely expect a miracle. A blessing is coming. I feel when this lunar eclipse or this solar eclipse, excuse me, happens, I feel like this is like moving all of that old stuck stagnant energy out the way. You got to release whatever it is you've been holding on to. Um, if you don't release it, it's going to get released, period. Um, or you're just going to repeat a cycle again. You're going to have to repeat something all over again. So it's very important to let what no longer serves you go to purge. Um, this is a very powerful week because, like I said, we're getting ready to come in um, on this Saturn's day to the eclipse season. It's ushering in the season of eclipses. Um, there's another one next month if I'm not mistaken. And I also believe the Mercury retrograde, um, I, I don't want to lie to you, but I believe the Mercury retrograde is coming as well. So the energy is going to be really like intense. So prepare yourselves, be prepared, be ahead of the game, 10 steps ahead of the game. Don't get sucked up into the emotional roller coaster ride because you didn't prepare yourself. Brace yourself because it's going to be a bumpy ride, but I feel like this is going to lead to so much beautiful energy, things you've been calling and praying for. It's just going to start falling right into your lap. It's literally going to start falling right into your life. And you're going to be so elated. Like I feel emotionally as well as financially, things are just going to be um, improved. It's just really going to be a good time for you, Scorpios. So I really, really thank you all for tuning and tapping in, for staying with me as long as you did. You know, I like to deep dive, give you solid readings, um, I do apologize. I'll get a lot of uh, um, requests for personal readings, but I've been told not to do any personal readings. These are the closest to personal readings. You're going to get um, these two hour readings from me. This is what it is, you know, um, but I do thank you so much uh, for tuning and tapping. And if you are new, you already know what it is. Um, I hope you stay a while. Uh, I hope you found what you were looking for. Um, if the messages didn't resonate here with your sun sign, check your moon, your rising, um, go into my archives. I got a bunch of 
other reading um other scorpio readings that may resonate for you um and if you are returning beloved you already know what it is love is love is love always infinitely it never ends i thank you so much for tuning and tapping in until next time i send a big fat ashe to each and every one of you thank you all for your love for your likes for your comments i appreciate just the beautiful love that you all show i appreciate you so much and i'm just humbled i'm really truly humbled to have such dope scorpio uh tribesmen and tribeswomen i'm just thankful but i just want to give you all this reading so you can uh jump start your week with um some foresight i hope it resonated and i'm gonna end it there <laughs> all right now infinite love and light to you all and we have venom playing venom everywhere this is by deadly venoms um one of the sisters that reign from this group is one of my bronx sisters uh champ mc she used to live right across the con uh concourse right from where i grew up so i just want to say uh with deadly venom uh be mindful you know because there could definitely be some snakes um and some fakes and fugazis which we did see um that could be really watching and spock it sp you know just kind of clocking you and clocking your style especially with all this blissing coming in um you can have a lot of people kind of like watching um and 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 really studying you so just be mindful uh not to talk too much about what you got going on not to even talk about these blessings that's coming in like you know what i'm saying move in silence as i always say uh don't just dis don't be on display don't let everybody know you know what you got going on don't let your left know what your right is doing don't even tell family you know what's going on just move in silence and act as if you know everything is everything you know but um with all these blessings that's coming in it's going to be very uh very necessary for you to keep your business to yourself and to not go around braggado like being braggadocious or telling i know i don't have to tell y'all that but some people you know when they get new stuff they don't they don't know how to act <laughs> so, so you know don't even be online like showcasing that you got a man or you got a girlfriend oh i got my look at me and my new boyfriend y'all taking pictures in the bahamas and sh you know saying there's gonna be somebody trying to do this right here to break that down to break it up so don't display your happiness and your joy. You know, my thing is, if you're truly happy, you don't even have time to post that stuff. If I'm out on a vacation with my man, I'm not going to have time to be posting a gazillion pictures to Instagram and Facebook, which I don't have. But just saying, um, hypothetically, like I wouldn't have the time because I'd be so just in, immersed in the moment. You know what I'm saying? Unless I see like an animal totem or something that I want to share with y'all. But. I ain't going to be posting no 50 gazillion selfies of me and my beloved partner kissing faces and in the pool, it, just doing the most. Like everybody's not going to be happy with your successes. And that's some of the things that you all have to realize is that, you know, some things need to be just kept quiet. All right. So hush the F up. Don't say nada. But um, I'm going to end it there. Thank you for tuning in and tapping in. Until next time. Ashe. Peace.